It's apparently common knowledge that modern reptiles look like dinosaurs. I mean, they kinda look similar, right? We've all seen Jurassic Park. Those velociraptors certainly have the same glint in their eye as does any lizard I've seen. The thing is, it's not really true that modern reptiles look like dinosaurs. Dinosaurs have been reconstructed to look like modern reptiles. Although dinosaur bones have been being dug up for centuries and interpreted as all sorts of things from dragons to biblical giants, it wasn't until the 1800s that the first dinosaurs were being scientifically described and serious attempts were made to reconstruct how they'd have appeared in the flesh. Some of the very first dinosaurs to be described, Megalosaurus and Iguanodon, were both interpreted as being enormous, oversized lizards, albeit with some important differences. Indeed, the very name Megalosaurus translates from Greek as Great Lizard, and Iguanodon as Iguanatooth. The word dinosaur itself was even chosen to mean Terrible Lizard, terrible referring to the size of these animals rather than any of the vicious weaponry they might have had. The earliest reconstructions of these beasts all have in common that they are basically just modern lizards with thicker legs and a more upright stance. With a horn placed on its nose, the first depictions of Iguanodon make it look more or less like a shoddy caricature of a modern rhinoceros iguana. More recent reconstructions of Megalosaurus, Iguanodon, and pretty much every other dinosaur don't show them off as being supersized lizards, but still in popular culture the idea that dinosaurs are just bigger versions of modern reptiles stands uncontested. Before we get too carried away, it's worth me pointing out that the affinities between dinosaurs and modern reptiles aren't a complete mistake. From what we understand, Modern reptiles and birds are each other's closest relatives, which is to say that they form a monophyletic group or clade. We call this clade Sauropsida, so birds and reptiles can both be called Sauropsids. Sauropsida itself consists of two major clades. One of them, called Lepidosauria, includes snakes, lizards and tuaterids. The other, called Archosauria, includes crocodiles, chelonians, and birds, which is to say that, yes, crocodiles and tortoises are more closely related to birds than they are to snakes or lizards. Now as you will probably know, birds are actually the only surviving type of dinosaur, so if we were to put non-avian dinosaurs onto our family tree, they'd go right about here. As you can see, Dinosaurs, including birds, are really only a particularly unique group of reptiles. However, this doesn't mean that dinosaurs and familiar reptiles like lizards are one and the same. You only have to look at a seagull and a salty to know that close cousinship doesn't necessitate outward similarity. What I hope to have demonstrated is how dinosaurs are actually related to modern animals, and that the public perception of dinosaurs just being big lizards stems from early depictions of them as such. But why is any of this actually important? Another misconception upheld in public folklore is that evolution is a process of progression. We're all familiar with the image of a quadrupedal ape walking towards an upright man as being the logo of evolution, to the point that when you type evolution into Google and go on images, pretty much every image you get is some variation of it. Now, those of us who are a little more invested in biology will also be familiar with chains of so-called missing links, as in Eohippus or Hyracotherium through to modern horses, Indohyus to modern whales, and Eustonopteron to land-dwelling vertebrates or tetrapods. The overall concept given by these chains is indeed one of progression that little deer-like creatures became noble steeds or great whales, that fish became lizards, or that stupid monkeys became civilised men. However, this really isn't how evolution works. Creatures evolve by a process of selection, such that any individual can be expected to be fitter with respect to the local environment than an individual in a previous generation. The key phrase there is with respect to the local environment. 
A whale is certainly much better at deep sea diving than the Alinda Hyas, but I'm willing to bet that a whale would struggle to live a life like in the Hyas. Likewise, our recent ancestors were better at endurance hunting on the plains of Africa than would be a quadrupedal ape, but our recent ancestors wouldn't have been as good at living the jungle life as would a quadrupedal ape. You will see, therefore, that evolution is not about progression towards overall superiority. It's about adaptation to the current surroundings. However, the idea of superiority is deeply ingrained in our culture. This stems back to ideas of the great chain of being, a concept from antiquity which placed man as superior to other animals, animals superior to plants, and so on. Basically, humans decided that humans were better than everything else, so the more similar something was to a human, the better it was deemed to be. Some science-minded people even retained phraseology from this concept, albeit probably out of habit rather than conscious intent, by referring to higher and lower animals, which is to say, higher or lower up the great chain of being. The worst phrases of them all are the ones like highly evolved, and hopefully this discourse will have primed you to see the error here. The culmination of these misunderstandings is that people tend to think of things from the ancient past, and therefore nearer the beginning of evolutionary sequences, as being useless and dumb compared to their modern counterparts. Therefore, when people think of reptiles as being just like dinosaurs, they think that reptiles are some relic from hundreds of millions of years ago and hence, they must be slow and dim-witted, having no intelligence beyond instinct. This far into the video, I hope that I have debunked these ideas, that reptiles are just like dinosaurs and that evolution necessitates overall improvement, and in so doing I hope that I've removed people's underlying assumption that reptiles are not capable of complex understanding. Equally, although it isn't what I've set out to do in this video, I think I should have illustrated that we are unjust in assuming that dinosaurs themselves must necessarily have been unintelligent. So. Where does that leave us reptile keepers? Historically, reptiles in captivity have been kept in sterile, basic environments. Boxes lined with paper and only a water bowl as decoration. If we could really be confident that reptiles were so vacant as the prehistoric misconception would have you believe, then this would be alright to an extent. If reptiles only ever acted by instinct, it wouldn't so much matter whether they could or couldn't express certain behaviours, because these behaviours would only be simple responses to the environment, like breathing faster when you're out of breath. With the understanding that reptilian mental stupor is a poorly founded assumption, we must realise that actually, not being able to exhibit natural behaviours may be psychologically damaging for reptiles. A tub setup does not facilitate the expression of natural behaviours. Wild reptiles move into the sun when they're cold, they climb, they dig holes, they hunt for prey. All of these actions are not catered for in lifelong solitude in an unlit plastic cuboid. We cannot be certain of the magnitude of the impact that this form of imprisonment has on reptiles, but seeing as we have no reasonable evidence to suggest that they don't suffer from it, we can never be certain that keeping them in the traditional manner is actually appropriate. Time and time again we are being shown that reptiles are capable of greater mental feats than anybody ever expected, such as bearded dragons and redfoot tortoises learning observationally, Nile softshell turtles playing with objects, and black rat snakes developing behavioural adaptability when raised in enriching surroundings. Even on a more basic, anecdotal level, I bet enough people are going to leave comments down below saying about the things they've noticed their reptiles learning. If we can't safely say that reptiles are unintelligent, and we keep finding evidence to suggest that they're smarter than anyone thought, is it not about time that we assume the damn well clever and wait for it to be proven otherwise? Isn't it time that, instead of goodly assuming we can chuck them in a cheap setup and they will be fine, we try our best to replicate the natural environments and in so doing ensure that they don't undergo psychological discomfort? I think so. 
So on that note, we can draw this video to a close. If you did enjoy this video then please leave it a like and please subscribe to my channel because for today I've been JTB Reptiles teaching you how to follow nature's example and I'll see all of you in the next video. Bye guys.